are mere casuals. <laughs> okay, now we're Don't recording. Need to. That's outrageous. So welcome back to Mere Casuals, a World of Warcraft podcast. I like how you Captain Kirk that intro straight in. Welcome back. You, well, you know what I figured out? I've started because I'm actually editing the audio for the podcast now. So if anyone listens, you'll notice that episode five sounds much cleaner than the other episodes. That's me. So I figured out that if I pause between saying things, I can just edit that pause out later. You're just like Lysol wiping our, our podcast, aren't you? Yes, very much so. So I, I de kirkify all of our uh, talking. That's great. outrageous. Oh, you thought he was going to say outrageous. Gotcha. <laughs> So, yeah, well, we might as well introduce ourselves again, just in case this is the first episode somebody listens to, because it's possible. Like, I've never started a podcast at episode six before. I have to listen from episode one, but some people start, like, midstream. In the in the grand scheme of possibilities, I think this is the least unlikely thing to happen, that this would be the first one that they would listen to. That's the least unlikely? I think the least unlikely is they listen to episode one first. Well, that would be the most unlikely. How is that the most unlikely? Well, Wait, the gonna... most unlikely. So it's the least likely that they listen to episode one first. Let's, let's let them match that out for a minute well no no why would episode one be the least likely to listen to first well because you said you never do it and this could possibly be and it's no like, i said i always listen to episode hey, one first anyway this is the least unlikely of possibilities is basically what i'm getting at it is a possibility i think anyways i'm josh slash will i'm sam slash rogue and i'm alan slash okona Slash because I'm a rogue and he slashes. Yeah, you things. do the slash thing every time. What if I told you yes, that I edited every time, the slash you, joke out every time? Every time, and this is number two. You didn't edit it out in number five. Oh, so you actually listened to it? Yeah, I was listening to it. Sweet. I so made comments. So to you're you. one of our you're one of our thirty listeners then. That's actually more disappointing than it is anything else. <laughs> so okay, so listeners, that's a segue. That brings me into our I want to do a little housekeeping session for this podcast, this this episode. What I want to do is right now I want to talk to our listeners and I want to say hi. I mean we're always talking to our listeners, but I want to ask for feedback. They they won't be able to give it to you. You won't be able to hear it. No, they will because I'm asking them now for feedback in the future that they will write to us through various um channels. Oh. So what so what I'm doing is I want to know A, are people listening? B, are people enjoying this? C, what can we do to improve? Because I feel like I feel like each episode we've done has improved a little bit on the one before. Like I feel like we're getting better. We're we're learning how to to actually have interesting conversations more often than not we're learning how to 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 put the 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 structure of the podcast together so that it's more listenable i want feedback and i want to know people are listening so we have an email address that you can reach us at it is mere casuals all one word at gmail.com that is our email address so if you like emailing email us and tell us that we're doing a bad or a good job whatever um, we have a twitter account that is just at mere casuals again all one word do we have a Facebook, Sam? We are getting there. It is not quite ready yet because I haven't figured it out yet. So I don't use Facebook. I haven't in a very long time. So I put Sam in charge of our Facebook account because we want places to get feedback and interaction with anybody who might be listening. And we are excited to see the wonderful job she's going to do with it. Well, but well, for someone who uses Facebook as much as, as she does, she claims to not know how Facebook works. Uh -huh. so. I just scroll. Do you think, because this episode that we're recording right now, this is going to come out next week on it Monday. It should be up by next week. The Facebook? Yes. Okay. Because I don't even know how to find a Facebook page. Do you just like go into Facebook and search it? And just type in the name. You just type in? Which will be mere casuals. Not one word. So you could type it two separate words and it'll come up? But don't sure. type not one word. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta specify that when we say all one word or not one word, that is not actually part How of the address. How about in our description on our <laughs> podcast. podcast, we can just put the links to everything. Is that a possibility? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. It's a possibility it's a on the YouTube channel that I've created. Segway. <laughs> So I've created a segue. It's, it's mere casuals. No, you haven't created a segue. You've created a YouTube channel. Created... The segue took care of itself. Yeah, I tried a segue once. Fell flat on my face. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I've created a YouTube channel. It's mere casuals. It's not all one word. Don't type that. Uh, just mere casuals. I've put it up so... I put up all of it. There's about six or seven videos there right now. And it's mostly me because no one else will record. But I usually record when I'm out ganging around with these folks and a few others. Uh, I try to privatize anybody else's 
much as I can. But all of our links are there so far. I've got all our podcast links. Um, I didn't put the YouTube link there because I thought that'd be kind of redundant. Uh, as soon as Facebook's done, I can throw that one in there. I'll and you know. uh, any other links that we create, I'll throw on there. Please come by, like, subscribe, comment. I learned, I learned that from Ethan Page in the unlikely event that Ethan Page ever listens to this. Well, I'll send it to him. I will try. Although, do it. does anybody who likes World of Warcraft know who Ethan Page is? Because I wouldn't unless you kept telling me constantly. He is one of the most brilliant, most brilliant Hamilton-born wrestlers. He's right up there with Iron um, Mike Sharp. I so hope he doesn't funny. hear that, though. <laughs> he's from Hamilton. Okay, I understand yes. now. I can. I know your fascination now. And he does wicked. Oh, by the way, he has excellent toy shops as well. Follow his channel. His toy shops are hilarious. His guests are awesome. And uh, it's not a wrestling thing. It's a toy shop thing. So if you're a geek, you're gonna love it regardless. He is a wrestler though. Yes. Who collects toys? Yes. So I guess I'll give him a pass on the wrestler thing because he does toys as well. Well, you know how we do toy shops. Yes. And it all started because I said, hey, we should do a toy shop because I was inspired by Ethan Page to do toy shops. Now, so technically... So your, your Wicked collection behind you, I mean, you might have done it at some point, but it would have been different because we would have started at a different time. So you can thank him. I started buying my stuff at flea markets before you brought up the toy shop thing. Not like this. Come Not on. as much. Oh, on, break down. Just, just saying, say thank you, Ethan Page. But I've just never... Just say thank Ethan you, Page Ethan Page. did nothing. You told me about Ethan Page. I should be thanking you. Yeah, he's, he's future AEW champion, by the way. I digress. You do a lot. Very often. So I think... I think that's all I wanted to do for the housekeeping thing. You Basically, didn't... we want... Oh, and we want to... You know what? We want to have, like someday if we get enough listeners like a discord where we can talk to people because we like talking to people we like interacting with people in game and out of game sam doesn't like talking to people she barely talks to us she made a face when i said that like uh like well like talking to people for example i'm gonna skip ahead on our on our little uh what is this called agenda what's it called when you write things down in order that you want to do them an agenda an agenda okay um at least it's not hidden I want to talk. Well, it is because no one can see it. This is a, this is an audio format, and the agenda is written on a piece so, of paper, so, so it's kind of hidden from the listeners in that sense. So I wanted to talk about because we we ran into a uh, a tank that was one in one of our groups. How would you say that? Barathrum? Barathrum? Yes, Barathrum. Barathrum. I wonder if that's a reference to something. So I got to this point while I was editing the episode and thought, hey, maybe I'll just go Google Barathrum and see if it actually is a reference to something. And it turns out Barathrum is a Finnish black metal band. So that's cool. But he's a warrior. And uh, what dungeon was it that we did with him? Was it Utgard Pinnacle? It was one like, of the Utgards. I feel I, like every time a dungeon comes up on this podcast, it's Utgard Pinnacle. Yes. I think it was. Yes. So we had him. We used the dungeon finder, the three of us together. I think I was healing at the time. And Sam and Al were DPSing. And we picked a tank out of the dungeon finder, and as soon as he joined our group, he said, Oh, just a heads up, this is my first time tanking in Wrath of the Lich King. We popped his cherry. Like, at, at all. And <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that sometimes. <laughs> um, and he did pretty well, but we had fun with him because he was not an elite player, just like us. And we, we did the dungeon successfully. I think we might have died once. Did we die once? There was a few deaths. I think all we I think we had one wipe. I think we wiped once. But we still had deaths. We had a couple deaths. I mean, he was he didn't have great Clearly gear, I don't but have he a did good menu my memory because I don't remember this. You were there. I know. We were talking because we were also in that same group was someone from a guild that you pointed out. Oh, yes. Uh, it was uh, it was it was a guild I forget right now, but it had a tune in it called Red Dragon, which goes back to my Ethan Page reference. So Red Dragon is a tag team that was in AEW. I don't know what they're doing right now. So it was from it was from Band Together. Was that the name of the guild? Yes, Band Together. Because he said, well, isn't that like some kind of wrestling reference as well or something? Well, I mean, there's a number of things going on in wrestling with banding and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of funny. But no, I've been kind of low-key stalking this guild, just trying to see if I'm actually playing with some wrestlers. Because some of these wrestlers play games so i don't know but so does red, superman yes but red, but red dragons just made me interested i haven't seen any other names pop up that resemble wrestlers but i mean if you were famous and playing a game would you want people hounding you all the time i would i'm not famous though so maybe i wouldn't but yeah so we we were playing we were doing the dungeon with him and it was a lot of fun and we were kind of chatting with him the whole time we told him about the podcast and he was like oh that's so cool and yeah so i don't know if he actually went out and looked and is listening but if he if he is that would be cool but if you are let us know 
yeah, email us. In the or comments just down us below. In game. You, you know who our characters are. We talk about them every episode. So that's, yeah, that's that. We want, we want, uh, we want interaction. We want people to, we want people to message us and talk to us. Um, so moving on. Is there anybody out there? No. There is. I know, I was kidding. We can see that people listen. I know somebody's listening. I know at least one of my friends are listening. We were talking Would you about like it to today. say hi to your friend, Sam? Hi, Sam's friend. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for listening. All right, so we're going to move on to, we've got a news section. We want to talk about some news. It's time for the news. Well, we should be growing and getting new sections every day. Yes. So our new section is a news section. So I get most of my information actually from listening to other World of Warcraft podcasts. So I did hear, oh wait, no, I didn't get this off a podcast. I saw this on a YouTube video that apparently when Alduar, is it Alduar? It's Alduar. I am saying it right, right? Because I said it wrong all last episode. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Alduar. Alduar. Continue. That's right. Alduar. Alduar. Okay. Alduar. Alduar. I never say any of the words right, so does it matter? It does because the place I in the said storm it wrong. Peaks. I said it wrong repeatedly last episode, and I actually had to edit a little explanation in for why. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. No, I liked it. I liked the explanation. Um, so apparently, when Alduar comes out, they're also going to be adding in the faction change. What? I know you're shocked. That's awesome. That's that's outrageous. <laughs> so, do you have comments, Sam? Nope. No, you're just sighing at us. So I can bring this uh, well-worked-on level 70 druid that I worked on on the Alliance, Alliance side over to Horde? Yes, apparently. they they're, they um, I guess, according to the video that I watched on YouTube, not our channel, different channel, between uh, data mining the Alduar patch... Is that going to cost again. money? Yes, they'll charge money for it. Between like real money or in-game money? money? Yeah, oh. they'll, it'll probably be like 20 bucks or something to faction change. Okay. At least, I don't know. Um, yeah, between that and I guess a little statement that Blizzard released it makes it like almost certain that they're going to put the faction change in with the Alduar patch. So you'll be able to bring your Druid over. My, my Alliance side main was also a Paladin, so I don't think there's any point to be transferring mine no. over and i was looking and i had a warrior a level 70 warrior but he's on my other account and i don't want to i don't want to keep paying for two accounts i already canceled the second account you Twice. can if the accounts are both in your name and i hooked up to your same battle net um and i did this for my daughter i put a hunter from because she played my hunter atreyu atreyu by the way wicked name for a hunter which from the never ending story i didn't remember that i don't even know if i've seen that whole movie oh man that's just blasphemy anyway i moved to you from my main account because she put all the work into it and I moved it into my other account that I then transferred over into her email address for her to play. When was this though? This was a while ago. It was on. I don't know the date. Because they play? used to do account transfers. I don't think they do account, like I don't think they do character transfers from account to account anymore. I don't think that's a thing at all anymore. Well, they, they were it? both, they're both my account though. I know, but I don't think they do it. Like I don't think that's a service they offer anymore because I looked into that a little while ago. I don't remember when. Okay because I wanted to switch one of my characters from one account to the other so that I could play, try and play both at the same time, which is harder than it's worth, so I don't really try and do that anymore. But I looked into it, and apparently it's a service they stopped offering years ago, um, and I don't think they have any intentions of putting it back in. I mean, if they did, then yeah, I'd probably transfer my warrior over. It'd be fun to have a level 70 warrior. That's only 10 more levels to level up. I do have two warrior alts right now that I'm leveling up. I started one, and then I restarted. So what you're saying is you're a glutton for punishment. I like warriors. I like paladins more. I'm also leveling a mage. Oh, look at this. Alts is on our, our agenda as well. Do we want to talk about alts? Wait, we're talking about news. Let's finish news. Gotcha. So Alduar is also coming out. We don't know when. Are we excited about that? Did we uh, talk about being excited about that last episode? Yes, I'm excited to get to that so we can get through that so we can get into the, the ICC stuff. But uh, Alduar, yeah, we're excited because of the vehicular manslaughter we we'll be doing. We both said it differently. Alduar? Alduar. Alduar. He said it differently. Alduar. I feel like we're saying the same thing. Okay. So for you, Alduar is a bump in the road on the way to ICC. Yeah, but it's going to be like one of the funnest bumps I've had in a while. Now, speaking as someone who hasn't even done a raid yet, still. Well, that can't be me. I was a tank. No, in, um, what's this expansion? In Wrath of the Lich King. Have you even done, you haven't done a raid yet? Well, I signed up for the raid, but then my job changed my hours, oh. so I couldn't go. But I signed up for the second night, but then you guys did it all on the first night, even the, the two 25-mans. Well, they were all 25-mans. Yes. You know what I mean? The the two, one boss The two, yeah, the two yeah, dragons. So, you, so you did it all on the same night, so. 
You guys just basically it's screwed because, me over. It's because they're easy, and we can. But they're still going to be easy if you did it on the scheduled night that I signed up for. That is technically true. No, yes. Yes, it is um, technically true. I feel like there was a reason for it. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the whole, we scheduled for Sunday, but we finished it all Saturday thing. But I also don't really have any say in it, so it is what it is. Best saying ever. Are you gonna Are you gonna raid Alduar? Yeah, I'm still gonna try and get into the raids now. Um, yeah, well, it gets you gotta you gotta get into those raids, get some gear. Here's the here's the thing. Hopefully, okay. my coworkers stop calling in sick, and I'm the only other one that can fill in the shoes. Alduar. Oh, what raid. I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, another thing that I have that I have heard, but I don't know the details because I don't I don't know the details on a lot of things. I just know the vague kind of generalized knowledge about some things. That's okay. We're um, mere casuals. We are. So I guess we have we have a go ahead to be vague. non non knowledgeable. Oh yeah, going back last episode, going back and listening to it, man, we had a lot of stuff that we were just slightly wrong about. I can't remember what, but there's a lot of little things where I was listening and I was like, you know what, I don't think that's right. And there's another thing where I was like, no, I don't think that's right either. Like we got uh, the number of bosses in Nax. That was wrong. That was me. I was wrong on that. I think I said something about the item levels of the drops in Nax. I was wrong about that as well. Um, oh, so what you're saying is when we when we were wrong, you're saying that you were wrong. Yes, but you didn't correct me, so you were wrong by association. Well, I haven't done the Nax. But you said 17 was in there somewhere. Was 17 in there somewhere? No, no, not at all. And the item level? I was not really that close. But that's not that's not important. That's the. It is what it is. It is what it is. Best saying ever. So so when we go on, when we're doing five mans, because I have the add-on where if I mouse someone over, it says their their gear score. So when we're doing five mans, if I start criticizing people's gear score, uh, you should probably point out that I don't even know what the item levels are. So why am I judging people on their yeah. gear scores? But okay, yeah. So when, when we move to phase two, I think the way it works. So phase two is Alduar. So right now we're getting badges of, no, emblems of heroism and emblems of valor right mm -hmm. and we're using that to buy the stuff that's currently on the vendors the the valor and the heroism vendors yes so i think what is happening is there is going to be stuff from the nax raids i think will be purchasable by some of those emblems now you know what now that i'm saying it out loud i don't know how it works but basically it gets easier to get the stuff from those nax raids so like so some of the, like the valor level stuff will bump down and be purchasable by heroism emblems and then the raid stuff might be purchasable by the valor emblems does that make sense yes and then you go raid alduar for that gear and then i think when the next raid comes out they'll bump that stuff down and you might be able to buy that because i think the way it worked one one of the things one of the podcasts i was listening to they were talking about this and what they believe is going to happen podcast that's Warcraft Reloaded, by the way. I listen to that one. It's another Warcraft podcast. They they sound better and they have more listeners and they're better they're, than us. Well, I mean technically. And we know it. Yes. But um oh what they were speculating is probably gonna happen. So back in original Wrath, they had the heroism and the valor, right? Right. And then there was a new emblem type in Alduar. Don't remember what it was called. And then there was like the frost ones from Ice Crown, and there was something from Trial of the Grand Crusader. Like they had all these different currency types. What they think they're going to do is they think they're just going to keep the heroism and the valor and just kind of shift up what each gives. So like when phase two comes out and Alduar is out, you do Alduar, you'll get the valor tokens, and then you do Nax and you get heroism tokens instead of valor, but you can buy better stuff now with the valor tokens. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, that's going to really bump up the amount of heroism tokens you get, emblems. Well, yeah, which, I mean, I don't think there's a cap to it. Like, I've got, I think I've got over 100 right now because I was saving up for a breastplate, the... Uh, disenchanted one? Yeah, because I disenchanted one by accident. Okay, so here's a story. I'll tell this story. You know the story, but everyone listening does not. So I turned in... No, no, no. I did Nax 10, okay? And I rolled off spec on the chest token that you can turn in for the, the chest item, mm -hmm. the 10-man version, right? And then I put it in my bags because I, at that point I was main spec, DPS, off spec, heals, but I'm a paladin, so I also have the option to tank. So I was starting to build a tank set, and at some point between me winning that item and turning it in for the tanking breastplate and uh, and me actually changing my secondary spec to tank, which I am a tank off spec now, at some point I was doing some bag cleanup and I accidentally 
accidentally disenchanted the breastplate, which normally isn't a problem because Blizzard has this service where you can just, you can click on a few things and it takes you to an item restoration page and you can select the item you want to restore and I believe they mail it to you and if you have the currency you got from disenchanting it in your bag, you take it out, they take the currency back and you have the item back, it's been restored. No mm. problem. But the item that I disenchanted was not showing up on my item restore list for some reason. That's I don't weird. know if it's because it's one of those ones that you turn in from the tokens or I don't know why, but for some reason it was not showing up. So I put in a ticket saying, hey, I did this and it's not showing up on my item restore. Can I get this item restored? So I waited a week and I still hadn't gotten a response. So I put in another ticket saying, hey, I've waited a week and I still haven't gotten a response and raid is tomorrow and I want to have the option to off tank and I'm not at my defense cap because I'm short an item. Is there any way I can get this restored? And I still did not get an answer for a couple of days. So the user interface that I use, it hides a lot of stuff that is in the basic interface and I don't know how to make it show up because I haven't spent that much time learning it. So what it does not have is it does not have the little icon you get when you have a ticket submitted. So I was messing around with my interface the other day, which I ended up going back to what I was already using because I hated everything I changed it to. But in the process, I removed everything and I had the default World of Warcraft interface with like the little bar on the bottom and stuff. And I was able to mouse over that ticket submission thing. And it said the average response time for a ticket was 46 days and 12 hours. And I was like, okay, I'm not waiting 46 days to get my breastplate back. It's going to be obsolete at that point because maybe Alduar is going to be it by then. I don't know. So I started doing heroics and saving up my badges. And a couple nights ago, I collected enough badges, because you need 80, that I could go and I could buy the token and get the breastplate. And I went to the vendor and I was standing there and I was thinking to myself, do I want to buy this right now? And I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to give Blizzard the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give them one more day. So I logged off and I went to bed and I got up the next morning and I had an email from Blizzard saying my ticket had been responded to and I had an in-game mail where they had restored my item. So I, I didn't waste my tokens. So I, now I have like a hundred heroism tokens that I haven't used because I was saving them up for that and I did a couple since. But here's the thing. I don't know if they messed up or if they felt bad for taking so long or what, but not only did they restore the item because with a paladin, you have three choices that you can turn these in for. You can take the DPS one, you can take the healing one, you can take the tanking one. So they restored the tanking one that I had asked and they have slightly different names. So they restored the tanking one that I had asked for and mailed it to me and they restored the other one as well. I don't know, just in case they had it wrong. So I had the mail with both breastplates in there and they didn't take void crystals. No, they're not called void crystals. What are Abyss. they called? Abyss crystals. And they didn't take the Abyss crystals as a, as a refund either. So I got two free breastplates, didn't have to give back the disenchanting mats. And the second one I didn't need because I have the 25 man version. So I was able to just disenchant that one again. Yeah, I'd like to be happy for you. I would. Would you though? But my takeaway from that is that while we were leveling and you would tell us how impatient you were and you would level ahead of us and get to 80. Yeah. Decided that when you had all that you needed, you went to the vendor said, I'll wait for Blizzard. But the heck with Sam and Al. Yeah, you couldn't wait. For, I never even thought of it like that <laughs> until he said it. Well, you were not impatient for that one, were you? <laughs> I, well, okay. So this was a matter of me just waiting till the morning. What was I going to do? Equip the breastplate and use it in my sleep? Like, I was like, oh, I'll wait. Sometimes I wait. I what wait. the heck with Sam and Al? Well. <laughs> if what do you, you have to say about that? You didn't see this going in this direction, did you? No, I didn't see this as a turnaround and attack, attack me because I just wanted to level faster. Have I have I leveled our warrior alts without you? I don't know. I haven't been on it in a while. Without me? I have. Well, well yeah. you weren't part of that. See, we need to have... <laughs> We need to have the occasional character we play when you're at work. Yeah, no, that's true. Because you, we will help your character when it needs it. You refuse to retire and just play full time. Are you old enough to retire? I can't retire. So if we can, if we can find a way to make you know a couple hundred thousand dollars a year off this podcast, then you could retire, right? Like, subscribe, comment. I feel like it would take a lot more than that. Share. 
<laughs> there you go. Share as well. There you go. That's that's what got it. No, that feels that feels like an unrealistic goal. Being able to retire and podcast professionally. We should set up a Patreon. We could, we but we don't listeners. have enough listeners for that. I feel like asking people to pay for something that most people aren't even willing to take for free at this point would be a bit much. But maybe in the future. Maybe maybe when we get uh, when we get when we get fans, if people start to like us of knives. Well, we already have the fan of knives. That's that's another one. When I was going back through editing, and I was like, do I leave the fan of knives joke in? I did. You did. I have power. I have the power of editing. I could I could edit everything out that you guys say and just have myself talk for. Then why did you minutes. invite us to do well, this with you then? Because I don't actually want to. Yeah. Do that. I'm just saying I have the power to do that. I don't want to use it because that would be silly. No one wants to just listen to me talk for an hour. I do. Do you? On a regular basis. Oh, you I listen to you. me talk. Well, yeah, but you don't want to. True. So if you had a choice, you would stop listening. Which I'm pretty sure you've already stopped listening to me most of the time. Sorry, what was that? Exactly. So what do we have next on our agenda? See, I have... Okay, so that was news. We talked about our warrior friend that we made. Oh, Pil Pilgrim's Bounty. Pilgrim's Bounty started today. 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 But... Is that the Thanksgiving thing? That is the Thanksgiving thing because... It's late. American Thanksgiving. In some other countries, it's Thanksgiving this week. We had it like a month and a half ago, but in some backwards parts of the world, they, they all celebrate Thanksgiving at the end of November. What? Has it been a month and a half? For Canadian Thanksgiving? It was like beginning of October, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, yeah. I think it was. First yeah, half of October. Yeah, I just October. realized it's the 21st. It's Second. almost, it's it's almost the end of November. Is it really? Oh, it is. It's almost the end of November. So, yeah, but Pilgrim's Bounty. Okay, so... We should probably edit that out, the what? date, because it's not going to be posted on the 22nd and people are just going to get confused. No. People know that we don't post and immediately release it. I think I think we've said before that we record, like, up to a week before we release the episode. Sometimes two. Sometimes two. But I don't like doing two. That's too much. Like, say, say if today... We, two, too much, yeah. Say, say if today we recorded two episodes. So one of those episodes would be released on... The 20 I don't know what day something? it is. Like sometime in December. Right. And that's a long ways away. And we have we have a news segment now to think about. So it's bad enough that we're saying, okay, this is news on the 22nd when this episode doesn't come out until... Let's check the calendar. Archmage Timir foresees this coming out on... The 28th. The 28th. Of November. Of November. Which is like six days from now. That's a long time. News goes out of date fast. See, everyone's going to know about the faction change going in by the time they listen to this. It's not really news anymore. It's more for our benefit having something Will to talk they, about. Will they, though? I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. Does everybody watch YouTube videos and listen to podcasts and stuff regularly? Well... For me to answer that, I would have to actually talk to everybody. And we have now ticked over 8 billion people on the planet. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that is a lot of people to talk to. I feel like we've run out of time. See, I personally, in my spare time, like when I'm playing, like I play, I have my computer here. I'm playing World of Warcraft Classic on my computer. I turn on my phone to YouTube and I sit it right here and I watch YouTube videos about World of Warcraft while I'm playing World of Warcraft. I do the same, but I have another monitor so I don't have to use my phone. I have another monitor, but my computer doesn't let me do two video outputs. That's, so that's lame. So and then and then when I'm working, because I have to drive sometimes for work, that then I listen to World of Warcraft podcasts. So I'm getting that information. I don't know. So maybe I get more of a more of an information feed going into my brain than some people, but I don't know. So Pilgrim's Bounty, we should uh, do the events. We'll record it. We'll make some videos, and then we will talk about what we've done on our next sesh. Yeah, Is it we a should. Week long thing? It's I think it's a week. Yeah, it's a week. I haven't looked at the achievements. I know there's one where we have to kill a bunch of turkeys. Mm -hmm. There's one Don't where we have to... Don't forget to love and hug first. Yeah, we have to get 15 turkeys to follow us using something, some kind of bite. Gibbler's Bites, I think. Is there? See, Within a minute. At it. So here's the here's the catch with Pilgrim's Bounty, though. Do you know what it is not a part of? Uh, what a strange long trip, whatever that's called. Yeah, it's not part of that achievement. Yeah. So there's like a bunch of achievements, and I think you can get a title and everything, but it's not part of the... The big meta achievement, which is kind of lame. It, it kind of takes some of the motivation away from wanting to do it. I mean, I want to still. I will. Don't we have to go and share a meal at the other faction's tables? Probably. That'll add some motivation. That'd be fun. I mean, we're not on a PvP server, so it's not as, like, wild. But, I mean, it'd be fun. But if we enter the main cities, PvP okay, server or not. Here's what we should do. Well, this, the tables are outside, though. Like, in Silvermoon, the table is, like, out at, what's it called? Tran Tranquillion? Is is that the name of the town? That's yeah, the rap, there's one the in Silver well. Pine Forest as well. Yeah, so I mean, you can do it without going into a major city, but 
for fun, we have to go share a meal at the opposing faction's table. What if we all PvP flagged first? Okay, then so I would die. Not necessarily. No, they'd kill me. But then if we die and we can't complete it, then we go back unflagged and just sit there and be lame. Yeah, we can. We have time to be lame. Let's not be we lame have a to week. start. Okay. But uh, I remember doing it outside of Darnassus. So there's got to be table. There's tables at the major cities as well. There is, yeah. But like I know the Silvermoon table is not in Silvermoon because right. that's where I just did it on my mage. Yeah, if I remember, Darnassus is on the other side of uh, their exit from Darnassus. It's just outside there by those yeah. big trees. Like in the lower part? Like you know how Darnassus, you portal no. down? It's no. not in that lower area? No, you got to go through Darnassus. It's in, it's on the actual island. Oh, okay. I know where you inside. mean. That's what I recall. That's a, that's an ages old memory. But. No, you might be right. I haven't really looked into it. I didn't even actually, like as I was on briefly this morning, I was playing my mage alt and then i switched over because i did some of the like little cooking things for the pilgrim's bounty with my mage and then i was like oh cooking okay my cooking's high on my paladin i'm gonna switch over and just get all the recipes and as soon as i switched over i got the countdown for the server reset so i didn't really do much i learned all the recipes and i think i did the quest to make the spiced pumpkin stuffing or whatever it's called but i didn't do very much i didn't even get a chance to open it up and look at the achievements so i i know that there's some i just don't know what they are when we're done talking about pilgrim's bounty let me know i want to i want to add in something to do with achievements well i feel like we don't really know much about pilgrim's bounty food fight and next thing on is there a food fight one yeah we get to throw food at other people sam you like that I'm still throwing pumpkins at people. We're going to have fun when the Christmas one starts and we get to shoot the faction leaders with BB guns. That's, well, you know how long ago the Halloween event was? She apparently still has a stack of pumpkins. Because yeah. every time we do something, she throws a pumpkin at my head. Yes, because she probably looted them all off the course. Well, yeah, she is a little loot happy sometimes. I destroyed all mine because they were taking up <sighs> bag space. I would have taken them. I would have taken them. I didn't even realize they were tradable until after I destroyed them. So you know what I like doing? I like to throw the baby spice and the old spice at people. I have a bunch of that. I haven't used any of it. I had one guy standing on the fish, the, the fishing daily vendor in Dalaran. It was standing a Standing on the vendor? Or on the, uh, the quest giver. Oh, oh, like covering it up? Yeah, on one of those big mounts. It was a tauren on a big mount. I threw a baby spice at him. I said, thank you. How small did they get? Small enough. Oh, well, that's kind he of... He looked cool. like a regular-sized humanoid, but he's on the mountain and everything. He said, thank that's you, I'll get that now. So next thing on our agenda is achievements. So what do you want to talk about achievements? So I've been looking at the pet achievements. Yeah. And I went over into my alliance, too, and I don't have a lot of money left over there, but I bought the pets that I can buy. So you know what you could do? What, what professions are your druid that you want to transfer over? Leather skinning. Oh, okay. So they're like not exactly money makers. I was going to say, if you're going to transfer, like if you're definitely going to transfer your druid over, rather than doing the whole transfer thing that we do through the neutral auction house, just start collecting stuff on your druid. And then when you faction change, it brings all your stuff with you. Yes. Yeah, but I'm so not, like but... collect all the pets. I feel like that's where you're going with this. You want to collect the pets. Yeah. Like collect like, I don't know, whatever. You can even start leveling it if you want, really. Like, yeah, I won't get those pets back for 30 days because they're sitting at uh, creamy oats. Well, I can, I can I can return them as soon as we're done recording. Where my titanium ore was. I forgot. See, I haven't used that to transfer in so long because I finished, I drained my, my accounts basically on the Alliance side and I finished transferring everything over. So I haven't had reason to log that character on in months. And yes, I know you did tell me, but I forget. Oh, that's okay. I want to I I keep on this. terrible memory. I want to keep on this pet achievement. So there's one where we can help each other. Are you implying that I get sidetracked and change the subject a lot? All the time. I don't have to imply. <laughs> Sam, will, Sam will just tell you. Uh, so there's one in West Westfall. Yeah, a pet? Yes. That you need to be alliance to get. Well, need to be alliance to create. Okay. Okay, so there's one of the farmers, Saldine, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, he will find out, but you have to buy something from him and you use it towards his achievement. And if you go to one of the chickens there and you emote chicken to it a number of times, eventually it'll lay an egg for you and you can loot the egg. And does it hatch into a pet? And it hatches into a chicken pet. I have two semi-related questions yeah. to ask when you're done, but I'm not gonna go off topic because I don't always go off topic. So I can go over on my tune and I can like, chicken love I, I can love a chicken to death and get you guys no an egg you to can loot. love a chicken until it lays an egg you're not killing the chicken that sounds just as bad i had comments so that. i'm gonna love a chicken until it lays an egg and then you guys can loot the egg and then i can transfer over and you can log in your alliance. oh so wait as our horde characters we could stand beside you while you're doing that and we can pick up the egg it lays yes 
Oh, okay. Oh. And then I'll pick up an egg, and then there's one more pet that we get, which is kind of cool. What is, how many pets is the top achievement? I don't know what the top achievement is. I feel like it's 15 or something. No, 15 is like the lowest. I think it's 25 is oh. the lowest. No, I think it's 15. 25. I think it's 15. 25. Okay. Is it 25? I did it. I feel like it's 15. What do you think it is, Sam? I said 15. Oh, see, Sam, see, it's two against one. But you said it was the lowest. I don't know. So while you're looking that up, I want to ask you the two... Um, Questions. What's it called when something's beside? Uh, the two adjacent questions. I'm going to stick with that. The two adjacent questions. That's the word I'm going with. Question one. What's that dungeon called? Dead mines. Isn't there a couple parrots that drop in dead mines? There's two, and I'm going to do that. Are they tradable? I guess we could just take our horde characters in there, couldn't we? Yeah, we just take our horde characters in. We there. could probably. Do you think we could? Do you think we could three man dead mines? See. <laughs> That's our level 80s. My my guy is currently sitting in Gromgall, waiting to run over to Deadmines right now. Oh, you're going to do it without us? He was going to get it yes. for us. No. Are they tradable? No, one pet drops. So why don't we just go in there alone and get our own forgiveness? You it's, think we can solo Deadmines? Well, the Torn at the bottom might be a little troublesome when he stuns us. I know, that's a tough dungeon. I was a little bit worried when I was running... <laughs> Were you on what? When I was running Scarlet Monastery today. With your rogue? Yeah. Your level 80 rogue? Yeah. What worried you about that? Well, because I didn't attack any, like I didn't attack anything. I just went right to the boss and you know what happens when you go right to the boss it pulls everything it pulls everything which i was fine with i killed the boss really fast as soon as i killed the boss the second stage started where it put me to sleep and i'm like oh oh <laughs> so i was sitting there you keep taking damage while i was asleep? there asleep and things were just hitting on me and i was like crap I mean, it should barely be no. able uh -huh. to hit you, but like, how much damage did you end up taking? I, I didn't take a lot, but I was wondering. Okay, I was, was going to say, I was going to say, there should be nothing to worry you in Scarlet Monastery. And I was like, oh yeah, you got to stand there stunned for like 40 seconds. <laughs> that would be fun. So okay, so when you go, when you run past everything and engage the last boss, does it pull the whole cathedral? Does it pull the whole zone or just the whole cathedral? Cathedral. It doesn't pull the whole zone. No. No, it'd be cool if it pulled the whole zone. Then you could get some DPS numbers. Um, nah, no, nah, not as many as I got when I did. You, you sidetracked us this time. We were talking about dead mines, and the other question I was going to ask that's kind you of said adjacent. DPS. Did I? Oh, wait, yeah. I went into Scarlet Monastery. Yeah, yeah. you changed it. You you switched us to Scarlet Monastery. Yeah. So anyway, um, we'll get that pet from Westfall. Which, oh, okay. I actually have a couple things that I was going to say we should do. First of all, okay, so the, the Oracles and the Frenzy Heart Faction in Sholazar Basin. When you get exalted, you can buy an egg. Does that egg hatch into a pet? What does that do? Okay, so I'm starting to do the Oracle dailies now because of this egg. It hatches in three days. It can hatch into one. I thought one. it was seven. Is it three? I think it's three, but I'm not sure. You have to be revered to Sam, purchase Sam, what do you think it, it is? Five. Oh, see, now we all disagree. It's not five. It's I'm not five. Out. It's either three or seven, but it's seven. But it hatches into one of three pets or a mount. Oh. So can you buy more than one egg? So which... One at a time. Okay, so you can do it like every three to seven days. Yes. That's cool. i got to finish that. I'm revered with oracles, but I. it's one of those factions where I'm like, I just have been too lazy to do it. If you're revered, go buy an egg right now. Are they not exalted? No, I think they're revered. Oh. Well, as soon as we're done recording, I'm going to go buy an egg. What? Which one is that? That's the ones you've the, been doing. The oracles the in Sholazar Basin. Oh, okay. You know how you go and you find the treasure on the ground yeah. and you kill all the things and there's one where you probably fly around? Okay. Like, there's there's a couple where you have to, like, land on each of the pillars and do something, like, blow a flute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't gotten the flute ones? No. So there's, like, you know, there's, know you so mean. there's an achievement to do, there's eight different possible dailies you can get, three at a time per day. I have done it, no, there's eight. Six days. Six days. Okay, so none of us were right. Edit time. It turns out Josh was right. It was seven days. So, we, yeah, that's one of the only two options between three and seven that it could have been that we didn't guess. We're all bad at this. So there's eight possible quests. I can't, there's one I just haven't been able to get. Every time I go, it's not there. Now I don't go every day, so I guess that's my fault. I like the one that lets me charge up the crystal and really ups my damage, like amps up my damage. See, I haven't been able to okay, figure out how so to get the crystal to charge. speaking of that, I killed everything and then realized I had to do the crystal thing. Okay, you don't have to do the crystal thing. It just well, makes it easier. I've, I've never done I the crystal thing because I couldn't so figure out how to charge the, gift, the crystal. The gift, the... Quest. You don't have to do it at all. You can hand yeah, me the quest for doing me. it. Really? Yeah. Oh. So where you pick up the quest, there's a pillar there. It's the broken one with the elementals. There's a red shard sticking out of it. Mm -hmm. You go there and you charge it. And then you go and kill the oracles. Now the best place, there's one place where there's like 20 to 30 oracles standing on a rock. Yeah. So I put on my little slippery spell, which is... 
evasion. Mm -hmm. Put on evasion. I charged myself up with that thing and I just went in and I got attacked. The first time I had 17 of these little Frenzy Heart tribe things coming at me. Yeah. 17 of them. And I managed to do two fan fans and eyes and they all died just like that. And I had 10,000 DPS. That's like this Yeah, you did send me sweet. a screenshot of that. See, I do that with my Paladin without the buff just because I'm like, you guys can't hurt me. 10, so I just 000? go, not 10,000. Well, yeah. I don't know. Maybe on that. No, because I don't have I don't have a real AoE. Well, I guess I do. I have Consecrate, but that's not very high damage. My AoEs are cleaves. So I've got like one thing that can hit up the four targets. I've got another thing that can hit like two additional targets and stuff. So my my AoE, in air quotes, doesn't scale up. So if I pull like 100 mobs, I'm still not hitting them all, except for with Consecrate. Consecrate hits them all. Yeah. But it doesn't do a ton of damage. So the other, the other semi-related thing I was going to say is we tried doing this a while back before we were level 80 but we need to go back to oh, what is that zone called outlands no um zul grub we need to go back to zul grub and farm the mounts yes and farm the mounts we need to kill the tiger boss and the raptor boss as often as we can until we all get our mounts because we i almost soloed the tiger boss as a level 70 so i feel like the three of us together can definitely kill them at 80 so it's a is it a three-day lockout it's not a seven day right it's a three-day lockout I thought it was uh, once a week, but if it's only three days, that's awesome. I I feel like because the forty the forty man raids were weekly. I feel like the twenty mans from classic were three days. I think. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they're yeah, maybe they're a days. week. Well, let's start doing it. Well, well yeah, we should the, we should do that. Like every every locket, we should be doing that until we get all our mounts because the mount achievement is a thing. And the mounts are just cool too. And well, and they're cool mounts, but like collecting mounts is fun. Like we should get as many mounts as we can. I want um, my broom. Says the that. guy that took forever to get all his teeth. Yeah, but I did get them. It just I get sidetracked, and once I realized. So okay, what I was doing even after Lich King came out, and even after I was bound in Dalaran, I was taking the portal to Orgrimmar and then flying to Tenaris, and then leaving and doing something else because the flight takes like 15 minutes, and then picking up the quest for the teeth and going and doing it. It took me until I had three teeth left to realize that I could just take the caverns of time portal from Dalaran and I'm already in the right zone. <laughs> So once I figured that out, I got the last three done in like three days. Do you think the three of us could do the old world raids? Um, like Molten Core? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. AQ? 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 No. Like AQ 40? No. I don't think so. Well, Why do you, want you know what? Now? I don't know. Because that's level 60 content, right? Yeah. I feel like some of the mechanics we couldn't do. But you know what? I don't know. We worth a try. We can we kill the trash at least. Get yeah, another I don't DPS know. friend. Because do those mounts count? That's the other thing. Do they count towards your, your oh, mount I don't know. I just want to get it done on my character. But Yeah. I mean, I would, I'm would. i sure you could like 10 man it. I, think I don't do know if we could 3 mount man it. I think they do count. I mean, they're mounts, so why not? They go into your thing. You just can't use them unless you're So that's you're in like, there. is that with red, uh, green, blue, yellow, and then the red's the rare one, right? So you can get four. Yeah. So that's four more mounts there. So we, we could do, so we get those four mounts. Because, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I think we could maybe kill the trash in 40. I know we can kill the trash in 20. We'd probably kill the bosses in 20. Although that first boss is a huge pain in the butt with the waves and the whole, all the different mechanics for it. The first boss in AQ20. Well, that's why I got my fan and eyes. I know. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying it's a pain in the butt. We should be able to three man. Oh, it's. Tw I was thinking it was ten man content, but it's twenty man. I mean, probably we should try. You know what? You know what we should do. Try in for our next episode because we're running out of time on this one, and we also haven't done any of this stuff yet. We should have the next week. We should go and we should do like some achievement hunting. We should go and we should three man all of the Burning Crusade heroics. I can solo them, but three manning them is much faster. Um, we should do all the Burning Cru Crusade Heroics. We should try and do um, ZG and AQ20. See how far we get on those. Farm some mounts, etc. And we should go back and we should see how far we can get in Molten Core with the three of us. Like, I guarantee we can kill Trash. We'll, we'll see. We don't... Well... <coughs> It depends. It depends how much damage the stuff does. Like in my prot spec for my paladin, I can go and I can solo the Burning Crusade heroics because I have enough self heals and enough damage mitigation that the stuff doesn't out damage my healing. Okay. And that's that's ten levels higher than Molten Core. Okay. So Molten Core is like yeah, they're like elite like raid tuned mobs. Okay, so we're back from our little unexpected break, and we can't remember what we were talking about before the break. So. Well, we were talking about doing the runs, the uh, the twenty mans, the achievements, the outland. Yeah. Raids. Well, what we're gonna do for the yeah. So we'll do some achievement runs, get some mounts, 
get some achievements, do some, uh, I don't know if any pets come from any of those, but uh, yeah, see how far we can get into Molten Core. I don't know, we can see how far we can get into Blackwing Lair if we want, but I don't know if the first Blackwing Lair fight's even possible for a short amount of people. You can't do it with one. Yeah, I know that. Sure. I don't know, it might, it, might, it might not even be possible because of all the whole, like, controlling the orb and all that stuff, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do, and uh, we'll have some fun with it. Um... So, yeah, last thing on our agenda was, was alts. Do we want to talk about some of our alts that we've been playing? Sure. Well, given this uh, all Jewar faction change release, I should have a druid I'd be bringing over soon. So you might have... And your druid's a tank. Are you going to keep being a tank? Or are you going to be something else? Well, moving on to the other alt I have, I'll probably try and make him a tank, but I haven't decided. Like a warrior, right? But with um, the dual spec... I may. What would you have as your other spec? Are you going to be like DPS tank? Well, DPS will be one of my specs, just because if I'm doing stuff on my own, I don't want to be a healer or a tank, because that's just arduous. But have you have you uh, have you seen how good Boomkins are in Wrath? No, I haven't seen how good Boomkins are anywhere. They're good. I don't like the look of a Boomkin. No. No. They are ugly, but they do some crazy damage. I don't need crazy damage. Maybe I'll give it a try once or twice, but as long crazy as I'm getting the job fun. done. Well, your your job, if you were a Boomkin, would be to do crazy damage. So, Or you could heal, because we had... You know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's an alt. Yeah. But, here's here's the but. If you had a healing, because if you had a healer... Was there completely, more Yes, no, I completely lost that sentence midway. If, if you were a healer, then we could have a healer other than me for, for doing group stuff. We don't even because have you as I've a healer got, right now. Well, I do still have my entire heal set. Like, I have a full heal set. It only costs me... Like, what is it, max out at 50 gold for a respec? Don't know. That's barely an amount of gold at this point. Like, I can respec my secondary spec as often as I want. Um, the only catch is I have to redo my glyphs every time because... I use different glyphs for tanking than I would for healing, obviously. Yes. But if I kept my tanks back, because I'm really enjoying tanking, I don't know why our DK friend doesn't like tanking. Tanking is fun. But if you had your druid and you had a heal spec on your druid, and like druids are good healers, um, we could we could four man any of the heroics. Like with a DK DPSing, D DKs do good DPS. With Sam's Hunter DPSing, hunters do good DPS, and Sam does okay DPS. They're different? <laughs> They're, well, I mean, you do fine. You're, you're getting better. I mean, I still suck at some of my DPS. It's just a matter of learning it. And here's, here's the you're thing. You're just trying to make me feel better. Getting good. Yeah, you had to get good. Um, here's the thing I'm noticing from... It's a thing. It's a thing that people say. Okay. Um, I don't like people that say it but Al started it. So one thing I'm noticing watching you play your hunter, I feel like you'd be better at marksman. You're, oh, you, I was going to be like, you're the one who told me to go to survival. I did, because board. that's the... Guildy said, yeah. I asked in guild. Because when you have low, when, when you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here again. When you don't have enough penetration, <laughs> survival is the spec, to, is apparently the go-to spec. But as you get more armor penetration... Do I have then armor penetration? You have some, but the thing is... I feel like you're having a harder time with the running in and leaving your traps and knowing when to do your... I keep your, clicking the trap at the wrong spot. Yeah, and knowing when to do your volley and when to use single target. I feel like you're not doing as well with that. I feel like you'd do better with like Marksman where you're just sitting back, sending your pet and shoot stuff. Okay. Because the reason you need gear for the marksman is because you're you're doing more physical damage rather than like that the trap that you drop that does like spell damage so it doesn't need the armor penetration because it's like a, a fire explosion and then I don't know how volley works if it needs armor penetration or not but we could just work on your armor penetration gear and you can gem for it and stuff we know a jewel crafter yeah. You might, you might do better damage, even without the high armor penetration, you might do better damage with Marksman over Survival just because of your playstyle. Okay. Or spend a thousand gold and uh, dual spec. Yeah, dual spec's so pointless as a hunter, though. Because what, are you going to switch back and forth situationally? I mean, unless you PvP, which you don't, then there's really no point. Like, I think the only, yeah, the only reason a hunter would want dual spec is if they're doing arena. Mm -hmm. Because you'd want your raid spec and your arena spec. Or just because. Just because you didn't want that thousand gold? Yeah, well, one, it's an achievement. I guess. And, and yeah, if you have a thousand gold to spend, and you can go back and forth between malls, marksmen, beast mastery, survival, whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be a point to it. There could just be something to do for fun. I feel like if it costs a thousand gold, I want there to be a point to it. 
I'm not. It's it's not it. real gold though. It's not real money. It's real in game money. It's important to me. No, okay. <laughs> yes, because you're gonna spend it on. Oh wait, you don't spend it. You. I do it. spend it. You should join that guild. We hoard gold. Do you know? Is that a gold? Or is that a guild? Yes. I spent so I respect between when we recorded the last episode and when we're recording this episode, I switched my secondary spec to tanking spec and. I wanted to we've discussed I feel like we've discussed on this podcast before how I don't have a lot of patience and I wanted to have defense cap and over 30,000 hit points buffed immediately because I just wanted it. So I bought a bunch of gear off the auction house and I spent I think 14,000 gold between gear and gems and I didn't really have to spend anything on the enchants because I had all the mats for that He's already. He's cheating but- on you. He bought gems somewhere else. I know. No, I didn't I have you? No, I had you make my gems. I just bought the raw gems for some of them. I had Al make my gems. I waited. Well, he was already online. But I waited <laughs> for him to make the gems for me rather than just going. Although there was a couple that I just bought because it was cheaper for me to buy them on the auction house than it was for Al to make them because people were just, I don't know, skill ups or something. You could buy the raw gem for 10 gold or I could buy the already cut gem for seven. So... Yeah. I just I bought the cut gems because why not? But I did have Al do my jewel crafting for me, and I had Al make me a neck item. Titanium and, Earthshock. And I definitely considered having Al make the ring as well, but he was at work when I realized I wanted the ring, so I just bought that off the auction. Oh, you son of a gun! Yeah, I didn't tell you I bought that because I was ashamed. But I spent like 800 gold on that ring. Yeah. So we are talking about alts, and now we're talking about alt specs. So I guess it still holds. Well, I no, because we're still talking about your alt. We're talking about your druid alt. And I was saying it would be um, if you had a druid with a heel spec, heel spec, and heel set, then we could we could five man all of the heroics, and we could do whatever we want, whenever we want. We could probably five man the 25 nax right. We'd be so powerful. <laughs> Do you believe that deep no, down in your heart? No, I don't. Yeah. But think how much easier we could do the old school raids if we wanted to, if we had a healer and a tank. Yeah, for sure. Because our DK is not going to tank. I feel like that ship has sailed. He doesn't want to tank. Yeah, I don't know how much longer he'll be playing. Yeah, I guess. We'll have to make a new friend. I feel like, and if he's listening, I'm sorry. It's not meant as an insult. But I feel like he goes through phases. He wants to play. But we're not on enough with him that I think he's eventually probably going to grow tired of it. But I hope not. We have differing schedules, too. Like, all last week, we both had to get up at, like, 6 a.m. or earlier to go to work all week. And he doesn't become available to do stuff until, like, 8 or 9 at night when we're already planning on going to bed. So it doesn't always work. I've I've enjoyed doing the runs we've done with him, but he's he's not on during our playtime as much yeah i also so i have the druid that i might bring over but i do have a warrior i'm currently working on as well he's at level 71 i think if not 70 but i think it's 71 i think i got him to 71 i did get him to 71 because i was uh, just thinking i did that in one day so just take you know if i did a level a day it gets hard to do a level a day yeah and but we've got our we've got our shaman and warrior combo that we play. Yeah. You're but the I, warrior. I took your done. advice. Oh, I thought you were done. Well, I was. I went out to Northrend at 68, and I was getting chewed up. <laughs> I was just getting chewed. Was up. Was that my advice? And so I, I feel like that might have been my advice. No, your advice was well. You know what you could do. You can go back and get your other two levels in Outlands. Yeah, that's what I think. My 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 advice was go do Nether Storm. So I that went. Was my advice. Um, yes, I did Nether Storm. I got up to 70, and I still had a whole bunch of elites that you promised to help me with, Sam, but you didn't show up. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't need to do them. I got to level 70, and then I headed out to... I went back to Northrend, and I was chewing things up. So, yeah, it did matter. Did you do the Did you do the PvP weapons? Nope. No? No, because I'm using two-handed, so it's like buying four weapons. Well, it's like buying two more expensive weapons. Which is the same price as buying the four weapons. Uh, it's just... I. I can't afford it. I got the heirloom chest and shoulders, Mm -hmm. the PvP shoulders, just for the shards, the chest I think I got with heroism. I'll probably buy some more heirloom as I go. I can get something now. I think I might need more shards if I'm getting the two-handed weapons, but there's the lava dredger. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's cool. And the trinkets are apparently pretty good, too. Especially if you're not, not so much if you're leveling like 70 to 80, but if you're starting at like level one, yeah, getting a trinket, a good trinket at level one's kind of a boost. Well, that trinket basically just reduces, like, it relieves you of snares. No, I'm not talking about the PvP trinket. I'm talking about the heirloom trinkets. Yeah, isn't it an inherited insignia of the Horde, which is... Oh, the PvP one, maybe. 
uh, like the the heroism ones though i think there's like the uh the one that can grant extra attacks oh that'd be cool yeah like i think that's one of the ones you can get with heroism yeah. but we've me and sam made our alts as well our low level alts does my class as a low level alt if i didn't start from level one no i'm talking about the other ones the ones where uh, oh the one i made a paladin we, we <clears> made <throat> yeah we made jack and beverly crusher yep so we were you don't you don't know about this this is new to you so when when you are like at your job we made these low levels they're both level five now and we were gonna try and start streaming them so we've got sam's do you want to do you want to tell us about your paladin? It's a healer because she's a doctor. Yeah, so Beverly Crusher, the healing paladin. Yeah. And I made a warrior, undead. an undead warrior named Jack Crusher because Jack <laughs> Crusher's dead. <laughs> so That's awesome. So Jack Crusher was killed and he was brought back as a forsaken. So we did our level fives in our starting zones. And then I traveled across the world to, to get thing. back to Beverly Crusher. And now we're going to adventure together with with Beverly Crusher and her dead, now undead husband, Jack. What I should do is once you're at like level 10 or 15, uh -huh. I'll make a level one and call him Wesley Crusher. <laughs> Sam, I do have that name Sam saved if you want it. Oh, she made that character. So. Just to save it. If you want so it, you, you can have if it. If you need it. Make an, oh, make a gnome. Oh, wait. That's Alliance. That's isn't Alliance. It? Darn it. Is there a short horde race? Not yet. Oh, yeah, goblins or something come in eventually, They come out with cataclysm. Cataclysm, yeah. That's a shame. Well, I guess Wesley could be a human, but, I mean, he wouldn't look like a child. Baby Spice. Oh, we could cast Baby Spice. I was just thinking that. Then uh -huh. we, could have, we could do, like, a family yeah. portrait. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want to do that. But we were... Uh, so we, we made our level fives, and we... Um, what video captured our leveling and we're going to do like a little video compilation to put up on youtube of our, uh, our of our reunion our leveling up in our reunion and then we were going to either make videos of us leveling together or stream we haven't decided what but basically it's going to be our journey through leveling up and in this in this universe jack crusher was not killed by something i don't remember what he died from in the show he wasn't in the show, but in the in the in the canon from before the show, didn't die from a cannon. I mean, different kind of cannon. Um, I don't remember <laughs> it was, what killed. It was him. a horrible Dark Moon Fair accident. Yes, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't remember what. But in this in this universe, in the World of Warcraft Star Trek crossover universe, Jack Crusher was killed by the Lich King. So we are leveling up our characters. With the eventual goal is we are together going to kill the Lich King. So we have some time. But that's that our puts a little tear in my eye i know it's a touching story yeah. and i feel like that's a good way that's a good thing to close on that that touching moment it hasn't happened yet we're still only level five oh, that's outrageous every time every time every time <laughs> right. goodbye everybody oh is that how we're gonna end things no now? we'll we'll edit that part out well we'll see